What's up, guys? We are back with the third and final figure in the Disney Ultimates Wave 1. We're taking a look at Pinocchio. Definitely one uh, that I know a lot of folks have been really curious about because he is, well, he's, he's very different in many ways. All three of these figures are incredibly different from each other. He's probably more similar to Mickey than he is to John, but at the same time, he is still going to be very much his own thing. And in that way, he gets his uh, own slipcover here. It's more similar to Mickey's than to say, again, John's, but it's, it's still very much his own thing. You've got the star up there. We've got, uh, you know, Jiminy Cricket down here floating on it with his umbrella. And then it's just done up in a different, uh, more subtle color scheme, but it's still very, very metallic, very foil chromed out and everything. So again, I really like that. Uh, they just seem a little bit more... I don't know, flashy in this particular wave. Of course, pop that off, and you've got your figure there in the big old window. So Pinocchio there with like a million accessories. He's got a wooden motif, of course, which makes perfect sense for this guy for his packaging. Pinocchio logo on the front, and then the back of the box uh, has some clocks, which again makes sense, a shot of Pinocchio, and then a bio uh, for what's going on with our little puppet boy here. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Super 7 Ultimates Pinocchio. Definitely not one I would have pegged for Wave 1 material. Like, it's not for a lack of interest. I just, I feel like he is still kind of an oddball figure for Wave 1, especially when we've already got another small figure with Mickey, but he's even smaller. Uh, they are very similar in many ways, but Pinocchio is still very, very much his own thing through and through when it comes to being an action figure. This is, of course, the puppet version uh, of Pinocchio also. It's not a full real boy, so he definitely has uh, puppet-style joints in many ways. Like, there's, some of them are cut to look like that, which is pretty cool. I mean, it makes perfect sense when it comes to what he's supposed to be. He does, however, suffer a little bit because of his size, uh, just like Mickey does. But I think things are a little bit uh, more hindered on this one than Mickey. He's a little bit more difficult to pose dynamically. So we've got a head that's on the ball, so he can look up a little bit. Can't really look down, though. Maybe a touch, but that's neutral. You've got your uh, bobble at the top. So decent, you know, rock side to side. You've got full rotation, of course. Arms out at the shoulders, and then they can rotate all the way around. You do have an elbow, and I honestly thought he wasn't jointed here at first. You, you can't really see it until you go looking for it. So he has an elbow. It's about 90 degrees, and then there is rotation up. It's under the sleeve. We've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. Like Mickey, though, he has nothing at the torso, so he is a solid piece there. There is no articulation. The legs are are pretty hindered as well, um, just because of, of how small he is, I think. So you can get him to kick forward, but you're going to have to rotate him out to do that. And then they kick out to the side slightly. Like, this is neutral, and then that is out. And that's about it. It's, it's really tough to get these to go uh, too much further. You do have a single-jointed knee but it's got pretty limited range also. And then there isn't really any rotation there. There's a little bit of shimmy, but his joints are created in such a way that it looks like two over piece, overlapping pieces of wood. So there, there is something hanging over top of that. You can, of course, rotate the, the thigh because you've got a thigh swivel up there with the, uh, the rest of the leg, but the knee itself doesn't rotate as much as you know a lot of other Ultimates do. We do have hinges, and the hinges at the ankles are pretty solid. Uh, no real issues to speak of here. There's a lot of range because of how deep cut these are supposed to be. So you can kind of see there's like a well in his foot almost. And then you've got an uh, area to rock down there also. So in comparison to some of the other figures so far, he's got, he's got really good rocker and pretty crazy hinges down there too. So he moves okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I was expecting, honestly, because he, he, again, is so, so small. I mean, he's smaller than Mickey in every way. It's not even just height. It's, it's overall proportions are very, very different and skewed here. So he moves okay. Uh, his arms move really nicely, though, so I'm really happy about that. I thought he was just going to be like a stick, almost. So I'm happy to see that those uh, do move well. He's got good ankles, and the head moves all right. Where he's really the most limited is going to be the hips and the waist region. Now, aesthetically, though, I think he's pretty spot on. And just like the rest of the figures in this wave, he definitely went through revisions between prototyping and now. So if you were to go back and look at those original solicitations, look at, the, look at all the listings that are still available now, 
he looks incredibly different and very off model in many ways. Uh, so I definitely know for sure. I mean, they, they definitely went back and fixed whatever they could to make him as animation accurate as possible. And I would say that without a doubt, this is very close. Uh, I think he looks really good. I mean, overall colors are incredibly bright and vibrant. I really, really like uh, just the way that they decided to do the joint work on him. So he, I mean, he looks like a puppet still. So you've got like pins through the knees and elbows that are very obvious and overt. It, it's not being hidden by any means because, well, they're not actually pins, but you know, they're supposed to look like pins. And he is uh, very much obviously supposed to be comprised of varying pieces and parts. You know, his his knees right here, for example, they, they have a distinct look to them. It's all very angular. He's got rectangular arms and things like that. So everything is very wooden and in many ways kind of stiff, but that's not necessarily a negative he's supposed to be made of wood so I do really like that the colors super bright super vibrant really like the bow and the uh, you know the overalls that he wears here uh, just to clash with each other these super oversized feet and hands again very very cartoony very Disney and, and I just like the way he I just like the way he feels when you've got him in, in your hand and overall stature of this figure because He's super small. I mean, I really can't stress that enough. We will do some size comparisons again. Um, but he is super small. He's very tiny. They still managed to give him soft goods, too. So his his vest is a super tiny piece of, like, felty material, almost. It's, it's kind of robust, actually. It's a little bit thicker than it looks. So it does look really nice. It hangs perfectly on him. It doesn't get in the way because it's really got nowhere to go. It doesn't have anything uh, as far as posability to it, which isn't to be isn't really to be expected, I suppose, because it's so small. But it does look good, and it adds a little bit of, of depth to this figure, you know. So it's not just another piece of plastic layered over top, or it doesn't take away from uh, his red. Uh, get up down there below. It's a different piece sitting on top. I do really like that. And then, I mean, it, the head sculpt here is is clearly the the thing that was changed the most to me, or at least the most obvious, because it's incredibly different from those original uh, solicitations. Similar to Mickey, I do wish there was a little bit of paint around the edges, at the very least, something to shade it in, or something to just kind of soften it a bit. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it, but I don't I don't find it to be too off putting, uh, in particular to me. And then, of course, you know, you've got a really happy expression. I believe this is even a different expression from what he was originally shown with, too. So super wide-eyed, mouth open, tongue exposed. You've got that uh, sort of long nose. I mean, it's longer than normal. And it's a little bit of a different color with his with his hat, with his hair sticking out, and you've got the little feather over there on the side. It's just a very classic Pinocchio look. It very much works. This is this is what you think of when you think of Pinocchio, right? So he looks like he jumped right out of the screen. Uh, he's super tiny. All of his proportions are really well done. Colors are nice and bright and vibrant, and he's got some much needed upgrades from those original solicitations that I think for most folks will be a night and day difference when you're checking things out side by side. Now, as far as some size comparisons go, let's start with the Ultimates from this wave. So, Mickey, Prince John over there on his sides, and you can see that Pinocchio is absolutely dwarfed by John. But he's super tiny even by Mickey's standards, and Mickey is not a big figure by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so he is he is, and will be the small guy in the Ultimates line for, for the foreseeable future, I believe. Uh, so let's do with something else. So let's move Mickey aside. And here he is with the King Diamond reaction. I use this for Mickey as well, just doing size comparisons. And I mean, King Diamond is taller than him, but proportionally, Pinocchio is still a little bit bigger. I think if you get what I'm saying here, he is still very small. So let's move the king aside, and here he is with a turtle. And let's move Prince John aside, and here he is with Snowman from Thundercats. And I mean, this this pr pretty much illustrates exactly how small he is. He is super tiny, you know, he's only about three and three quarters inches tall. And we'll move Donnie aside, here he is with Marvel Legends Wolverine. And let's move Snowman aside, here he is with the Motu Masterverse Stinkor for another larger scale figure. And then let's do another larger Ultimates, just to further illustrate exactly how small he is. Here he is with Bebop from Turtles. So, God, he looks even smaller. He looks absolutely tiny uh, in this shot right here. He's, he's super small. So this is, a, this is an incredibly small figure. I think this very well illustrates just what we're working with here. So this is going to be another instance like Mickey, where we're getting a very, very small figure but he's gonna come with a whole bunch of stuff to make him into something much more. 
and he sure does come with a lot of stuff. So there is a whole bunch of stuff in this package uh, to beef him up. So to start with, let's talk extra heads. So he comes with, you know, a normal head on him in the box. We get the beginning of his lying phase <laughs> with this head. So with the elongated nose, very, very shocked expression. And then we, of course, get the full-on one with the bird's nest where he's freaking out. There's baby birds in there. And this one's pretty wild. Like, I, I like the idea of getting these heads just because, you know, somebody's going to be able to do something pretty crazy with them when it comes to photography. And then just for display purposes, this is weird and different. I like that. Uh, he doesn't get a lot in terms of hands. So he's got gripping hands on him in the box. And then he's got these sort of splayed finger hands. And that's it. There's no fists or anything. I mean, I'm not sure he needs them, but, you know, that's what he's got. Uh, we get a couple regular accessories before we get into some of the more exciting stuff. Well, I mean, the, the heads are really exciting, but we get his apple. So we get his apple. We get the book with the strap on it. And this looks nicely done. I mean, a lot of paint on it, honestly, from those lettering and the line work and the strap. And then we get, I mean, we get the real stuff, the stuff that I really want to see with him, uh, just because it very much ties into him as a character. So we get... The axe, which is very important for him in many ways. I mean, Mickey and Pinocchio both come with an axe, so I do really like that. Uh, so this, of course, is a very important a very important thing that he gets a hold of in the, in the movie. We get Cleo in her fishbowl with the castle and the base and the whole deal. Like, there's a lot going on with this. So I really like this. This is really cool. Of course, you're going to be able to, like, set a little scene with Pinocchio and basically all of the friends around him. So you got Cleo... Of course, we get Figaro, so the cat, uh, the head does rotate, but that's about it. So you can sort of set Figaro on the ground, looking up at Pinocchio. Nicely sculpted, really well painted, very, very cartoony, which makes, of course, perfect sense. And this looks really good. Nicely sized, too, especially in, in line with, uh, with Pinocchio there. And then, of course, last but not least, what would Pinocchio be without this super tiny Jiminy Cricket. This guy was definitely changed from prototype stage to now. Uh, he, he had a different expression, different different sculpt, I believe. I think he looked entirely different. So like, here's the family right now. Uh, but Jiminy Cricket is, is a big, big thing for this one because not only is he incredibly important to the storyline, but he looks really good. Like there's a ton of little detail crammed into this super, super tiny figure. I mean, you can see just how big or rather how small he is right here. Uh, so there is a lot going on with this little guy and I'm really happy that they included him. I'd have been incredibly shocked to not see him uh, but to have him here is really cool. Just, I mean, you have to have him, right? You've got to have Jiminy if you've got Pinocchio, so it works really nicely. And there's just a ton of detail crammed into it. So I'm really happy with, with his size, but also how much they were able to retain when it comes to making him so flashy, because there's a lot of paint and a lot of sculpt on that little guy. So, yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of stuff. Uh, he's got pretty much just as much as anybody else, but there's a lot going on with his accessories in particular. There's a lot going on with this fishbowl. He's got a minifigure. He's got another minifigure. Uh, he's got various other accessories that he can hold. And then, of course, he's got two pretty elaborate head sculpts. You know, this one, of course, being the most elaborate. This one is pretty wild. Uh, so I do really like this. There's just a ton going on with that bird's nest from sculpt and the paint perspective. So a lot of cool stuff here. A lot of stuff that will really round out, again, round this figure out to make something really small into something much more. So overall, this guy's pretty solid. There's there's not really much to complain about except for the fact that he is limited when it comes to articulation. That's definitely the big area. It's definitely the, the area of concern for sure because he is more limited than other figures when it comes to ultimates. Uh, I thought Mickey was limited. He is a little bit more so just because he's, I'm assuming it's because he's smaller and things have to be a little bit tighter. It doesn't necessarily excuse it, but it's probably what it is. He, however, looks fantastic. Again, I can't stress enough that there have been a lot of changes between prototyping and this finished product that are going to be, you know, quite evident to folks. And then again, he comes with a ton of accessories. There's a lot of stuff here, a lot of very specific things. We get Figaro, we get Cleo, we get the axe, we get the book, we get the apple, we get multiple heads with the, the crazy nose. There's a lot of stuff going on here to make various versions of Pinocchio out of one figure, which I do really like when it comes to Ultimates. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates Wave 1 Disney Pinocchio. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.